goodness, I've tried. I've tried making them longer. Oh, I do make them longer now. They're, about, they're a couple of hours each. Sure. Um, and it makes a big fucking difference, actually. Like, right, we're yeah. on the way. When you're ready. Oh, you're shit. Ready. No, no, no whenever, you're, no, whenever you're ready. I'm ready, mate. No, I'm no, ready. No. Right, we're on. Mate, fucking good to see you. Good, good to see good you, to mate. See you. I'm fucking yeah. well happy to see you, mate. Don't see each other too often. And whenever you... Cheers, mate. Good Cheers. To see you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hard, hard drinking, hard drinking. Hard drinking, Wa- Buxton mate. Buxton water uh, in the morning. Just the, the finest. Yeah. Is this your day off, is it? Yeah, how mate. Did, yeah. How many day offs do you get? One. One a week. One a, well, basically, how it goes is at the moment um, because we're doing previews. So the previews are essentially the show tweaking the show and making sure that everything's up to speed before we do a gala night, which would be called press night usually if it's a new show. So the press will come see it. The press are going to come see it anyway. And this is before the preview, for example. No, no, no. So the preview is happening now. So we're on, right? Right. So you do about two weeks worth. Typically, we're doing a, a few a, a few weeks. So what happens then is you have a gala night where it'll be like, this is the opening, opening, right? This is like the event where, all, you know, you might have some celebs come. The premiere. The premiere, if you but will. But on, on stage, they call it the gala night, don't they? Yeah. Right. So I'm yeah. learning you. Oh, that's all right, mate. Yeah, exactly. So that, they'll have that. And then that's when the show is locked in. It's officially on. And it's like the tickets are normal, like the price it should, it should be. And... Um, yeah, that's it, mate. That's it. That's it. So when what it do goes, you mean the price is what they should be? What so they because when the previews in the theatre, you can get them for a little. T- I think usually you get them for a tiny, tiny bit cheaper, and what? that's because they're in previews. So this show's just getting tightened up. They're tweaking it. They're making <sighs> sure that you know because it's fresh on the stage. They don't. It's not the. It is the finished product, but it's they want to make sure that it's tight before it goes. After the press, to the so press. you're not pushing hard with marketing at the minute, for example. They are. They, they are. Yeah. That they're they're. they're building up and they want to, I mean, they'll get people in, they're getting people in now. Do you know what I mean? The theatre's open, fully, fully open. So um, they are pushing it. They're, doing, mean, they're still doing interviews and stuff. Um, you know, they've got, so we've got a media day next week and stuff like that, but I probably won't be involved in that, mate. How many shows have you done now? Uh, it's about two weeks worth. So we do to, to, to a matinee and an evening on a Saturday and the same on Sunday. So that's four shows. And then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So that's, well, eight shows a week two weeks 16 shows but what will happen is once gala night happens um we go into a week on week off in terms of me and i alternate with my counterpart because i'm also understudy to the two leads two male leads that are in the show so i've got a very small part and i'll play that week on week off and that's and so what happens is because of covid they have they they really want to make sure that if anybody goes down there's someone there ready to go and go on Mm-hmm. So, um, so my week on will be next week, and then I'll have a week off after that. So, how does the understudy bit work? So, the understudy bit, you right, it's a bit again COVID. So, usually you don't learn. I mean, if it's two leads, you don't really. That's not really known. But because of COVID, they want people to be able to cover a couple of people. So, I've got I've had to learn the two two lead roles. You're and, the cover of the pair of them. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, so that if they have a, an, an NA, it's called an NA, that's not available. They've got a date book, they've got a wedding, or they've got a fucking time off with the kids or anything NA like that. NA means not available. Right? Yep, yeah, and I'm in. And that's, so July 8th, no, I'm not, listen, I'm not actually allowed to tell people. <laughs> so don't tell anyone, because <laughs> they can change it. I know, I'm like, but it don't matter, no. They, 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 they'll be all right. I can bleep that out. Uh, nah, don't worry about it. Keep oh. it on, keep it on. Hey, Chower. <laughs> Come, everybody, everyone you know, fucking well, bring your, yeah. I'll be there, me and the missus will be there. Uh, yeah, mate. We, we're going, mate, we're going, good, yeah. Good, good, yeah, good. We're going, yeah. Mark and all the Kajaki boys are going to be there. Oh, like, and this is like the biggest turnout we've had for ages, mate. Like, the, you know, people that you wouldn't have seen for a long time. Yeah, be there, be good. Be good. Um, Luke can't make it, I don't think, sadly. Oh, can he not? I think he can, mate. Oh, uh, shit. Look after, mate. Um, yeah, no, we're going. God, I love stage. I love yeah. it. I, I don't. I, I don't. You all fucking love this show, mate. I haven't. I haven't. Uh, well, I oh, will see. <laughs> <laughs> You'll all love this show because I'm in it. July eighth. No, no, no. You're gonna love it, man. Yeah, tell you. I, mate, I haven't. I haven't been loads of times, but like, I, I grew up with my old man talking about stage shows and opera and all different. St- Your stuff. mum was she a dresser? Was she working in wardrobe or something like that? Is that? The, I've seen a few podcasts where you talk yeah, about. Yeah, you my, about your mum? My, my mother was like one of the only ones who hasn't done anything in TV films. So really, yeah. You know, on my father's side, mate. Fucking hell, where do I start? My, well, my sister's godmother. Yeah. She was a costume designer. Right, that's right? what I've heard, yeah. Um, my, one of my aunties, one of after for, she produced the first two series of Hamish, Hamish Macbeth. Fucking hell. My, 
Nan, who's now dead, she was in. She was an actress. She was in fucking Target and all sorts, mate. Wow. My other auntie, she still. I think she's still acting now. But <laughs> she was. Uh, <laughs> She was a Bond girl, but a, a henchwoman Bond girl in the Living Daylights, right in the first the first scene. What a clang to yeah, find! Yeah, she was. She was the. There was a, a there was a series on TV back in the eighties that many people will remember called "The Life and Loves of a She Devil." Okay, which was about a, a bunny boiler. Yeah, and she played the lead part. Like it made her career at the time. Yeah, played it. It was huge over here. And there was a film done about it, which Roseanne Barr played. The, the character oh, right. in the film. Yeah, 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 my yeah. auntie played the original in the series over here. It was huge in the 80s. Uh, my old mum was in a couple of Disney films as a boy actor. Hey, you got good lineage. Oh, loads, mate. I my granddad know. was... Um, I would never have known that. My granddad was in Hammer Horrors as lead roles. What's Hammer Horrors? Ha- Hammer Ho- What? Oh, man, I know. You remember, 32. Yeah, but still, <laughs> mate. Ha- Hammer, ho- Hammer Horror Films. Was it- Hammer was a production company. God, Hammer know. Horror Films, like... F- like I cult, like him, cult horror movies. Okay, mate. like I th- I'm, trying to, I'm trying to think of some now. Well, he was in Quite a Mass in the Pit as a, right. a lead lead role. Doc Quite a Mass. He's a Scottish. Oh, okay. Um, anyway, so yeah, that's a fair bit there, mate. Yeah, mate. Of course, <laughs> that's yeah. a fair bit there, man. Yeah, um, never appealed to you before you joined the uh, before you joined the Reds. No, I don't think so. I didn't, Not have, the, didn't have the balls, mate. You really? think about you got the balls to do this. Yeah, but I, that's why I am now. It's not what I was before. I mean, yeah. I, you know yeah, much more than I do, mate, yeah. how confidence and self-esteem sapping We'll talk about that it? in a second. Yeah. Oh, mate, my mate, mate. God. Yeah, oh, my but, God. But the thing is, people will like might, might listen to this now. You might get another actor watching this and they'll be like, yeah, it's just nothing. But I'm like, yeah, it's because you're in the habit of doing it. Once yeah, you're in the yeah, habit yeah. of doing it, that's different. If you took nine years off and you go back, you're like, whoa, this is... Oh, this takes a bit of getting used to. It's like I imagine if you've um, you had a break and you've gone back, to, or you've not been in training in the red sign light. You're like, fuck, I'm a bit rusty here. Yeah. And, and then you go out to Africa. Yeah, then you get what I mean. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. But you're like, well, that, or even then you're like, you think you're match fit then, but then you go out there, yeah, yeah. do a month, and you're like, right, okay, fuck me, I'm nothing like I was before. Yeah. Same thing, mate. Yeah. Well, yeah. But, so you took nine years out, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Was I, that? Oh, so I took nine years out. Um, God, we ain't, they ain't gonna get the bit before, are they? Shall we explain why? Go for it. So I, I'm still not entirely clear, mate. You're not entirely clear. So <laughs> right. So what had happened was Big Jackie 2014. Yep. Right. Yeah. Um, so up in that year. Uh, oh. I yeah, up in that year. Yeah. So but it's so basically I had. I, I there's no I'm not there's not there's no blame because we still don't know why it happened really why it happened um basically yeah so I had a stroke and uh I was do you want me to tell you how it happened and all go, that? go for it so they gave us a diet plan for Kajaki right some fucking mate I look at it now and I think to myself, why was you so what the fuck were you thinking just think because it, it weren't like relative they didn't say anything like it was like the 300 blokes down there like Gerald Butler and that and, and it just got ripped because you're meant to look like you've been there for a couple of months and you hadn't been a, you've been eating ration packs and stuff and I was like and I was a butler in a buff at the time right so after the, I was like pretty beefy and I was like fucking it stripped down um and so it doesn't tell you about any weight or what height you are or anything. It doesn't take it into account anything like that. It just gave you the ingredients and how much you should use and how much you should drink on this diet. And everyone got the same one. Yeah. Exactly the same. Yeah. The I, same quantities. I, and listen, I, Gareth, I'm not having a go. Whoever fucking punted it out. It sounds to me like you're having a go. I'm not having a go. It's not <laughs> doing. Listen, I, I should have been like smart to go. Go on. It doesn't look like I'm not eating enough or drinking enough. But <laughs> I've done that for a couple of days. I was like, come on, mate. I've done a bit of weight here. I'm going to stop. When did you start it? Before Kajaki. Okay. So done it again um, after. And I was like, because it was good at losing weight, but it, well, I don't think it was very healthy. But anyway, I just thought, fuck this. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to stop it. I've done about two days and I was just doing too much. Well, I could tell I was like losing too much weight too quickly. What was the diet? Do you remember? Uh, mate, so a bit of whey protein. Yeah. Flavorless. So there's no sweetener or anything in it. Um, a few blue, a handful of blueberries. Yeah. Not, I mean, I've got a big hand, but they were like, yeah, bl- less than that, like a smidgen of blueberry. Then you had a bit of flaxseed oil, I think. Yeah. Oh, fuck, there was one more ingredient. Uh, who, it was, gave it was who gave me this? Who gave me this? It was Kentucky. Yeah. Right. So 
And how many times a day would you eat that? So that was the, so no, that wasn't breakfast. That was after, that was post workout, right? So for breakfast, you'd have uh, squeezed lemons into like a big jug of water and some cayenne pepper. I sound fucking thick. Are you being sure? Like, are you sh- are you, hang on, hang on, hang on. You hear me out. Are you sure you didn't misread the instruction? No, I, did, I definitely. It was like one the sheet of papers. Like eat that, and I was like, okay, no worries. Do that after they gave you exercises. They gave you all sorts of. Shit. And how often were you supposed to eat like that? Uh, there was another meal. The other meal was salmon. Yeah, you're allowed to have like a slither of salmon and greens. So it was like no, car- basically like no right. carbs in it. Yeah, no carbs is an issue if you're training hard. Yeah. And also if you're a fucking about 14 stone, six foot one, and you're just not eating enough. But I wasn't clued up on training all that at the time. I was just thinking, I've got to lose it quick. I was just, yeah, I just wanted to get trim. But anyway, this has got nothing to do. I don't think it's got anything to do with it, but it just is what preceded what happened. So I went, oh, fuck this. This is a bit hard. I'm going to just fuck it off. I said to my little brother, it was a summer's day, and it was during... Um, it was like midweek yeah and uh i went uh to the shop i was lucky that he came with me went marks and spencers and um it was, it was in the car park and as we were walking i got out of the car so i walking into the right well, i'm about to walk in and uh you know like when boxers get chinned and their legs go yeah that's essentially i just i felt a, like that and i was like whoa and i just stopped in my tracks did you feel fine before that yeah, I felt fine. I felt fine. I had no sort of tired or headache, none of that shit. Just literally, it was just like wham. I could walk into a brick wall and I didn't see it. And, uh, and I couldn't move and I was just looking around, but immediately I was disorientated. Um, and my little brother said, are you all right? I, I remember him saying to me, are you all right? How old was he? At the time, I think he must have been about 19. And my, he's my baby brother. How old are I, you then? T- uh, 23. 23. No, fuck me, he must have been, fuck, he must have been 18. 18 uh and i was 23 <laughs> um and i see you all right and i i couldn't i don't think at the time my brain was telling me i was probably speaking fluently but i couldn't get my words out and i was like yeah nah and, and then at that time disorientated everything went black and white so it's just, but I, it, it, my brain wasn't cashing up with itself quick enough for me to be able to go this is what's going on it just went black and white and then I was sick on the spot, sort of like, I, t- I tried to just turn around, but my, it was like someone had uh, grabbed both both your ankles. You've got two people un- underneath you holding on, like ch- like you're dragging a chain and ball, right? So that was weird. And then immediately I threw up on the spot, but I had nothing in me. I wasn't eating properly. So I was like bile, right? So immediately threw up. And uh, then I was like, fucking hell, like in my head I was like, where's the car? I don't know where the fucking car is. Because everything looked the same. All the cars looked the same. Everything just looked... Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I didn't know where I was at. And I was like... And then he had to guide me a bit. But obviously my legs... I am In my brain's not computing what's happening. It's not going, something's very, very wrong here. It's just gone survival mode instantly. So it's like, stand, stay standing. Like, like fight or flight or whatever. Defend yourself or carry on. Do you know what I mean? It's just saying, just carry on. So I'm like, all right. And I'm trying to walk. And then I'll get to the where my little brother leads me to. His car. And uh, he goes to get in the fucking driver's seat, but I can't, I can't, my brain, I can't open the door. I don't know what to do. I'm just looking at it. I don't know what to do. And then uh, he comes back round, opens the door. He goes to go back into the driver's seat, but then I can't get, I could barely lift my leg up. So he lifts it up for me and I just slump into the car. We only live five minutes up the road. So on the way, I found out afterwards, it was quite traumatic for my little brother. And I didn't realise at the time how it would be because I, at the, I mean, not being like fucking bravado now, but I was his older brother and I was probably the brother that would be like, I would look after him. And so to see me and clip like that, it <coughs> wasn't, I, I didn't realise how distressing it was for him. So in the car, I didn't know who I was. I, I, I had, a, I, I'd, I'd done the dream, I'd, you know, dream job with Jack and everything else. And I was flying and I was like, I, I don't know my name. I said, what's my name? What's my name? What's my name? You're asking him? Yeah. Oh my God. Imagine that, like fucking, and then I knew my first name. I thought, I don't know. I was like, I couldn't fucking make sense of what was happening to me. But I didn't, I was, I don't know why I was asking. I didn't, I didn't fucking, but I, I remember, I looked back and put a jigsaw piece together. I was like, oh yeah, I was doing that when I, fucking hell. So it's strange how your brain just, it's just scrambled. So anyway, we got out to the house. Um, 
managed to get the door open and I just fall flat on my face. Lucky there's grass there to go bang like that on my face. And uh, I'm like at the time king of press ups. Do you know what I mean? As you probably argue, be like, you were king. I'm telling you now, I was just bloke of going to a room. I'd be like, I'll beat you, you and you, and I'll fucking have you and all. Let's go now. I was that bloke. And I, uh, Hugh, I couldn't, I couldn't, my wrists were like, you, you, you like, press up like that. It was just limp. It was just like everything was limp. And I couldn't, like, couldn't, so, so I, mate, I was couldn't get back a bloke, couldn't do nothing. Our next door neighbour at the time, Simon. Uh, mate, if you're watching, you're a fucking great bloke. So he's a football coach, right? Little bloke, little bull bloke. And he's like, flush as fuck. And he's <coughs> running out. He, he's a football coach at the time, I think for Arsenal. And uh, he's like, uh, you all right, right there, Grant? You all right? And he's like, oh, bloody hell. And like, my little brother's trying to fucking, because obviously my little brother's called my mum in advance. She's run out. Um, and mum's a trained nurse. Like, she, she's, uh, she's fucking done loads of stuff, mate. Um, worked at Belmarsh and all sorts. So she knows basics Simon the football coach comes over and he's fucking putting his knees behind my back and begging, I'm a fucking big fella do you know what I mean he's putting his knees behind my back trying to support me and that and at the time this is when I noticed uh, my breathing I couldn't breathe properly when you say knees behind your back are you sat up at this point trying to sit me up right. okay. do you know what I mean I was yeah, just fucking yeah, yeah. flopping yeah. everywhere I couldn't do anything mate so again I told you before the clots hit both sides of my brain that I found out so this is it's making sense I was like once like that that's, that happened the back part of my brain the cerebellum cerebr cerebrum whatever you want to say it. um it's the pilot it's a coordination so both sides is fucked um so i did notice then though i was struggling to breathe and it's so it's imagine like a tower <laughs> block mate big tower block canary wharf all the lights are on and it's like the janitors walk to the top floor because the blood flow is not going to your brain nothing else is fucking gonna work is it right so it's like because your brain controls everything yeah. yeah and so like everything do you know what i mean so it's like janet again one light off another light off another floor down another floor down so slowly shutting down. shutting down mate yeah um and so again it was like 20 everything was like 25 percent. i couldn't my breathing was fucked man i thought i was suffocating that's what it felt like and i couldn't <clears throat> i couldn't make sense of the situation in my brain it's like you know when you're unwell and you you think to yourself Oh, do you know, you're like you're a hangover, or you're throwing up or whatever. You know there's a respite. At some point, you you know this is going to stop. If you're out of breath or whatever, you're going to go, oh, I'll be all right in a minute. But well, my brain was going through the library going, what the fuck do we do? What the fuck do we do? I don't know this. We don't know this. And we couldn't make sense of it. And so, yeah, you're, in, you're not even... I don't even know I was in panic mode, mate. I just think I was fucking... It was just... It was not normal. Anyway... Mum managed to get me in the house. So he managed to get me on the couch. She puts my feet up under the pi under pillows. And at that point, I'm starting to shake. Have you seen Pulp Fiction? Yeah. Uh, right. So we're Uma Thurman, you know, and John Travolta, and she's fucking, and he's like, fucking, no, she's OD, and she's there, like, fucking do all that. Or the eyes are going to the back of the head. Um, that's what I noticed myself. I was like, don't, my brain when then was having a conversation with me. So everything else I could control, but then I started to have moments of like, <laughs> bit of clarity where it will go, stop doing that. You're gonna make people panic. Do you know what I mean? You don't, wanna, don't be a drama queen. So it's like, but I couldn't help but like, I thought my eyes were going to the back of my head. And also I was like shaking, I could see my hands. I was like, what? And I was like, stop doing that. But I couldn't control it. And I was fucking freezing, freezing. And now I later found that I was hypothermic on arrival to the hospital. I'll get to that point in a second. What was, time of year was it? It was summer. No. Yeah. So I was hypothermic because what happens is the blood the blood stops and the body goes, hang on a minute. This I think this is I think I'm right in saying this. This ain't right. We need to look after the vital organs. So therefore the takes blood, everything away. Thinks yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you, yeah, I was, yeah, so I was, I was on my report. I wish I should have brought it with me. Mate. It's fucking fascinating. Really. But anyway, so I had the <clears throat> param called the paramedics, and they came out. And it's not like the films where like. You know, it's all fucking. It's this couple that were lovely, lovely, uh, nice couple of people. I had a uh, Darren Valley. Don't go like, slagging paramedics. No, off. Luke will not be happy. He said, oh, mate, I'm telling you, they, they were so fucking good because this bloke went like straight away. He put me up to an ECG and he was just like, my heart was doing something like, I think it was pretty much atrial fibrillation. So it was just something that fucked up. He was like, he was like, Gene, Gene, we've got to get out now. We've got to get into the hospital now, 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 now. And I was just laying there like, fucked. And, um, I've got like a rickety path up to the fucking ambulance. I'm like hanging off of this, like this stretcher. They get me in the back, whiz me to hospital. And then it's like the films, because then they burst you through the doors. Family can't come with you. 
and there's a team waiting to work on you. And you're fully conscious. I'm conscious. I say fully conscious, yeah. you're stroke conscious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So I'm aware of what's going I'm, I'm aware where I am. Well, obviously, it's still struggling to breathe. I, I can't, I'm struggling to breathe. I'm free, I, I'm, I'm shaking and uh, just everything feels, I feel like I, I can only liken to someone trying to suffocate me. I've never been suffocated before, but that where you're trying to grasp for air, <laughs> that panic, you know, you're, on, you're in a pool on holiday and someone else dread under the water, a bit too long. You're like, yeah, that panic. That's what, we, that's what it's like. And uh, they burst through the doors and uh, there's a load, there's a team there basically ready to work on you. And they're all just fucking shouting at each other because they're like looking at me and they're thinking, what the fuck what's going on what this is not normal um and they put they wrap me up in this uh big thing where they heat your body up because it's fucking free and i could tell they was like the temperature and all that like he's fucking freezing uh they warm me up and then is that, cable, that, is that cable pissing you off no no it's fine it's fine it's fine, it's fine. Sure, sure. uh so they warm me up and they're all shouting at each other at that point i didn't quite know what they were saying to each other they were all talking in jargon and stuff um plugging me in and whatnot and uh and that was the moment mate i went um I just thought, ah, this is, I, this is it. This is where I fucking, my chap, this is where my chapter ends. Because I thought, that's, I, I've, I've, I was struggling so, like, I thought it was fucking forever. But at that point, I just went, mate, like, just relax. Now, mate. You've done everything you can. You're not going to, yeah. So I generally had the thought of, like, mate, this is how you go out. I'm on a fucking hospital bed. Oh, my God. Fucking grim, mate. But in that moment happened, I had the moment of being like, just, just I, my, my, my body, every, my brain, relax, mate. It's good. It's fine. You're all right. And then back in a room, back in a room, like fuck me, like that was fucking weird. What happened there? Like everything just went whoosh. Like I was fine, fine. What do you mean? Didn't have no clot busting treatment. I didn't have no. So what I found out later on is that the clots dispersed by themselves, and then it was like you're right. And I was still, but the thing was that was still abnormal was I was still throwing up. So every now and again I'd be like like retching into a little gray dish bowl that you get in hospitals. Uh, and that's when my mum, my, they allowed my mum in a short while after with my little brother. And mate, I knew something was like fucking horribly wrong because I mean, I was thanking my little brother. You don't go like, if you're a bit unwell, you don't go around thanking people for looking after you. You just, I was like, mate, thank you. Whatever, I like, mean, you got me there. You got me here, well done. Tears and all that. And um, my mum said afterwards that I knew because they gave me anti-sickness. They, they in, um, IV of anti-sickness <laughs> with anti-sickness I'm pretty sure it's like they could give you like I think two or three doses and on the third dose you carry on being sick there's something wrong internally like something not not really not right and I was continuing to be sick and then they went to me Do you, uh, well, you could come back in for an out, outpatient appointment or you could stay in overnight I'll fuck you stay in overnight mate stay I'm in. getting I don't give a fuck you put me in the corridor day? yeah they went, I went you could put me in the Go corridor on. or whatever yeah I, that, but I was cracking jokes with the nurses and stuff everything just went back to normal but I had a really my head was fucking like hurt bad really really bad did they know at this point it had been a stroke no not at all because again it's not the typical ap appearance of it because like you say one side and all that and you're young, you're young as young, well you are young now and you were younger yeah. then yeah and, and I didn't have physical disability like afterwards I was oh. lucky I was very 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 fortunate very fortunate I didn't have that I mean I was, I've got permanent brain damage because you could see the scar after when they done the radio I can tell yeah <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's from Wales he's a funny guy <laughs> Uh, you know. Have you really? Yeah. What, so yeah, because it's like it's like someone smeared the uh, like you got I've got the brain scans at home. I, said, I took a photo of it. Um, basically, what had happened? So then I got. A I can't tell by the way. I was. Like, <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I know. I know. So I, um, they they gave me a CT scan. All right. Never had a CT scan in my life. Have you? I don't. I think so. Yeah. So you put your chin on this this thing and it sort of scans around like that yeah. no i didn't know because they didn't say to me this is what we think it might be the ct scan ad was off my fucking head but i'm like cool funny x-ray this they're gonna make me put my chin here why are they doing that they want to see my body i don't have a fucking clue mate i was just like yeah go on do what you want um at that point i was just happy i was just happy that i'm in a hospital i'm like i'm looked after if anything goes wrong again someone's going to be nearby to sort me out and i was in my own private room and sitting there and anyway overnight i watched saving private ryan on a little little tv and i was well happy and uh the next day uh i was on my own mum and dad and Ella will come up tomorrow um i didn't know what ct scan scan was so obviously when this consultant came in and he was on his own i had no one with me and bear in mind 23 years old he went um right uh i said what's the good news doc and as i said it 
I was well happy. I had like a little croissant with some marmalade and that. I was fucking loving it, mate. I was like, this is an experience. This is a good story to tell everybody. And I was like, what's the good news, dog? And as like the words left my mouth, I thought, there's no good news here. Why have you said that? And I thought some, for some time after that, I thought, because you said that, that's why it, uh, it can't really. Superstition. Yeah, yeah, superstition. I was like, why did you fucking say that? And he went, not good. Um, uh, we believe you've had a stroke. And at that point, mate, imagine being 23, be like, you've had a stroke. I was like, mate, everything that's associated with our strokes, old people, but I fucking, people who are fucked. And, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a bloke with a, I'm an ego. Unfit old people. Unfit old people, mate. And I prided myself in being fit. And I prided myself in being, you know, like a lad and all these other fucking things that are meaningless. But it, part of my identity was like, that, that, that is the polar opposite. I was like, no, 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 I can't, mate. You can't be right. I can't be right. But he left and I was crying and that, like, fucking hell. And he was like, just because it was just rock my world, mate. I didn't think that was right for me to, to happen to me and all that. Mum comes in, they wrap, we wrap our heads around the medication thing. And then like, later on, later on that day, <coughs> because they're looking at CT scan, the radiologist report, they go, uh, I had an MRI that day to make sure that we've got a specific uh, look at the brain. And then a radiologist had a look at it. Some, a team, so the consultant team for the strokes went down and they were like, they come back up, it's a team of them this time. <laughs> And mum and dad are there. And uh, he's like, we, we don't think it's a stroke. We think uh, it might be tumours. Um, so we really need to, and also it could be something to do with your spine, something like that. Uh, so they were like, I'm gonna throw the book at you. And I was like, but we need to see the final radiologist report. So I was in bits. And then I had a really, really nice guy. Uh, he must've been like a ward nurse or something <coughs> like that. Alan Caverne. Alan Caverne is his name. He's Dr. Alan Caverne. So he came along, he's like, mate, don't listen to what they're saying. Wait till you get a radiologist telling you what's what, because they look at them every day and those people are just gonna tell you their opinion and that's just their opinion. They're not radiologists. They'll just look at it typically. And then once I got the report back, turned out I did have a stroke, but it was hit fucking two blood clots and hit both sides of my brain. And then they were just baffled. They like, they came back in and I was like, like I was a sort, sort of anomaly. So they were like, I was fine. I was walking up with my drip, you know, like you got your drip hooked up to a little wheelie thing. I was picking it up and going for a piss and fucking like, you know. It's 100%. 100% mate, and they were sort of baffled and- The same day? Uh, oh, next the next day. day. Yeah, but I was the same day, mate. I was up and doing my own thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to, I was paranoid. And after I knew that they said about maybe a stride, I was like, mum, bring my guitar in, bring my guitar in. <laughs> see bring. if you can still play. Yes, my fingers and everything, because dexterity. I didn't want anything that I thought, maybe I'm gonna sit down at a piano or something. And all of a sudden I'm like, I ain't gonna be able to fucking do that. Or I might, well, I might do that and my arm will go out that way. I don't know. Do you know what I mean? I was Wild stuff happens. Yeah, mate, because your brain rewires. Well, have you seen the case of the woman who, <laughs> she's a British woman and she had a stroke mm. or is it a coma? One of the two come out of it and she now talks a Chinese accent. Oh, I've heard loads of stories like But there's a video of it, it's yeah, on yeah, the yeah, news. Legit, it's wild. Legit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wild. And she, she's like, it's not, I, I like, it's funny, but it's not. But she, it's like <laughs> exactly. destroy the world. And her yeah, husband's like, mate. what the fuck? Oh, but this woman Can you imagine? <laughs> man, I can't wish I'm fucking good. It's so, so, so bad, yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, but mate, I felt, so then they went, look, they kept me in then. They were like, we've got to do um, loads and loads of tests. Uh, to find out why it's happened because that's not normal they thought maybe i had sticky blood there's like a blood uh, the, um blood uh, condition <laughs> where you clot easily didn't have that uh, they want to take fluid from my spine they wanted to do oh they're the one of the worst was a transesophical echocardiogram i think they call it well done they fuck, no, fuck me. i think that's right they mate they, they spray your throat with some numbing agent and uh and then they have this poor woman they get this thing like around you know like you, know, you get your teeth whitened and that i don't know like that this poor nurse there next to me she probably dragged her in from like mopping the floor like she's not her job and uh <laughs> fucking me laying there like that and they're like it's gonna be a little chill i'm thinking that's like, gonna be like this fucking cable or, or that like a little extension cable and they get this fucking gigantic like i'm shoving a snake down my fucking neck and like i'm like they give me a little sedative which is not to take me it's not mate it didn't touch the sides and i'm there like gagging and dribbling everywhere and um and then they can have a look at your heart and i had a little look and then they were like mm, nothing so it's really stuck a happened. camera down your throat basically yeah and while you're awake it's fucking horrible oh my so god so anyway so there was nothing wrong there but what they ended up finding was so they can have a look at your heart yeah how do they look at your heart with a camera through your throat mate oh, no, I mean, maybe he was doing it for <laughs> that a crack. doesn't make sense yeah, to me he did ask me to put a blindfold on everything no 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 he's uh, <laughs> <laughs> So uh, basically, uh, after that, I ended up doing a bubble test. And the bubble test is where they, they put in some, they have your body and oh, they, they put is. some solution through you and then they could see if there's a hole in your heart. Now, I'm sure you know, loads of people know that uh, all of us are born with a hole in the heart 
And about 75%, of us, it all heals over. It's all fucking fine. But 25%, it doesn't. I didn't right? know this. All oh, right. So it's a common <laughs> thing. It happens. So, you know, uh, but the, the people will go their whole lives and nothing wrong with you. It's fine. But there's a small percentage of people who have some fucking problems. And I, I mean, footballers get failed medicals for it. It's a thing. You know, if you've I've got heard that, of yeah, someone but, having a hole in the heart. Yeah. yeah. So, but it's not, you know, the end of the world. But what they, they chalked it up to, I mean, I got referred... Um, a second time so they said there's that we need to close it because that could be a risk for clotting going to your brain that they said but we don't know that you shouldn't have a clot going through there but what they kind of i went to king's and um i saw someone there i saw a specialist there because i wanted to get another opinion and my you know fortunate mum had a few friends in, in good positions that'll be able to get me there and he was like i sat down with this guy and he's like fucking like head of neurology at fucking king's so he's like fucking intelligent fucking bloke and he just looked at me and he's gone um you're very lucky i went yeah yeah I, I don't feel very fucking lucky mate but yeah and he's like no 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 you are lucky and he said you basically should be you know you know not even in a wheelchair you should be just you know you should be fucked you should either be dead or you should be like you know severely disabled and not be able to move your body um so he said you're lucky you're so lucky. And and then, you know, that sort of hit home. And then after that, he said, uh, look, the cardiologist is going to go to you. We think it's this. I'm a neurologist and I focus on brain. And I'm going to think it's this. So everyone's got their own opinion on it. Because like, they don't know what's what. And by the end, they said, look, the, the theory is, is that you probably had some stagnant blood in a chamber. And because you've got a little hole in there, it's seeping through. And it's something just like some stagnant blood pinged off. And it's gone to your brain. But, they, you know, they still don't know. So they've done a little PFO closure. It was bigger than what they thought. So they've done, they've got like this little coil they put in they put in there. So string it through like that. So through both chambers like that, string it through. And then it goes like that. So, so both, it, so you pull it like that. And so it's it a spring, for yeah. people listening, it's a spring you expand and then it yep. springs back spring together. Spring compact. Expand, right? That's it, mate. Yeah. And then, it, and then your heart heals over it. The muscle starts to just go over it. And it oh, part, they put the spring in the, in the wall yeah, of the heart. through the wall. So they string it, oh, through, like, wow. they thread it through. And then it, and then it let go, and it'll go up. Sorry, mate. It'll go, it'll go up like a. Oh, like, so it pulls the wall, it pulls yeah. the holes together. Yes, that's it. Yeah, oh, and then and, and then yeah. the muscle heals heal over around it. Oh, interesting. Yeah, um, and it was keyhole surgery. It wasn't fucking major surgery, um, but yeah, and uh, and that was it, mate. And then after that, the the what led from that was uh, and why I left acting um, was because uh, they they signed me up to a neurologist. Like a no, no neuropsychologist at the hospital, and I went, "Am I fuck telling these people what's really going on?" Because I don't want to tell them what I'm thinking or what I'm feeling like or anything like that. Because it didn't at the time. I still had because before I went drama school, I was like, "I'm going to military. This is what I want to do," and I was like, but at the same time, I was like, "Oh, if the acting kicked off, that'd be good as well. I'd like to do that." And so I was always like, "That's my that's my plan. If I don't fucking fancy acting anymore, I'm going to do that. I'm young enough, and I want to go do it." Um, mum was in the army, granddad was in the army. It was just, a, I was always interested, always interested. Um, so I, when I thought, if I tell them, I thought, fuck, I'd be able to get away with like maybe getting scraping past the medical after like five years or something of clean living and all that. And uh, so I thought, I'm not going to tell them what I think because they're gonna, that's going to be on my record then. People are going to know. And that will stop me from even, you know, becoming any sort of public sector job. Then I'll be like, oh, he's fucking... I was paranoid. I didn't want people knowing what, what, what was really going on. What? I don't understand. What didn't you want to tell them? Uh, that I was, um, at the time, how I was really feeling, man. I was, I was... It changed... When you have something like that happen to you, I don't know, it's not the same for everybody, but when it happened for me, um, you're so aware of your mortality. Like I weren't before. And like, if you've not had, like you've had life or death experiences, right? So you become aware of, fuck me, that could have been my day. That could yeah, have been it. Yeah, but it's different. So, yeah, like, so. what you experience is, is pretty rare, relatively rare, right? Because, I mean, you, know, you tell me, what's it like going in a, a, a mental process and accepting that you're going to die? With Ah, uh, yeah. So what's I that like? I couldn't, I think, I think it freaked me out. So what happened after that then? I, I, I never you had said it. you were super calm about it. <clears throat> in the moment, in, I mean, at the time. At the time. At the time. And then after. As opposed it, to panicking. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, I was. Pa I mean, I couldn't have time to because my body was doing all that. And then it mm. got to the point where I went, I just chill out now. You're done. This is it. This is it. Let go. 
That was what happened to me. And then you literally relaxed. Yeah. And that's why someone asked me the other day, they were like, um, are you, are you scared of being ill with death or are you scared of death itself? And I was like, oh yeah, fucking no one wants to be unwell and knowing they're going to die. That's horrible. But at the moment, I said the, the transition, you mate, you, you I have, I in my head, I'm like, well, it fucking happens how it fucking happens to me. But they're like, you're nearly going to go. You know, you're going to go and you kind of just go, I give up, give up, mate. It's done. You're it's over. And then you let go. But that's why people talk about the white light and all that and they feel like, you know, all that shit maybe. I don't know. I didn't have the white light and all that. But from that, the mental process, oh, fucking hell. I couldn't wrap my head around it afterwards because I was like, I was so aware of it. So I've never had a panic attack before. I never had anxiety. And I used to, you know, I don't, I'll tell it now because I'm fucking well versed in it. But I'm like, I used to scoff at people would say, I panic. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? I drop, like, don't make shit up. Like, you know what I mean? What is a pa- I, I, I was the same yeah what I mean you I do mate as long you as experience school. one and you go oh yeah. my Holy fucking god what the fuck is that that is real <laughs> that is real that is real and that horrendous. is real mate and yeah. so mate it's, it's, it's grim and so what happened was I was having moments so if I stood up too quick and I had a bit of head brush I'd be like fucking hell it's happening again it's happening again oh. so I was very aware of a lot of things would trigger mm. you know, they, this is another thing they would have put it down to post-traumatic stress that's what they would have put it down because they'd be like, you're having moments of things. That, and I would have to physically grip, I have to sit like, I'd have to be like, I have to have the fucking earth grounded beneath me to feel like, fuck, I could deal with whatever's going on. It's the fight or flight thing. You're like, I've got to defend myself. I've got to feel ready for whatever's happening. And I can't control it because it was within me. I can't, it's not something I could face and I could deal with it because mm-hmm. I don't mind doing that. But it's, I can't combat anything that's happening with inside. I've got no control over it. Mm-hmm. So that was another thing that freaked me out. So like, I don't know when my day could be. That could have been my day. And then, then you start to, th- it's, it's, it, then you just start to think more and more and more and more. And sometimes, yeah, mate. I, I, it's a young age as well to experience it. Yeah, I mate. mean, the stroke bit aside, it's a really young age to yeah. have an experience like that. You still, like, you still, your brain is still growing, mate. Yeah. You know, you're, you're not, you were, ju- you were a kid. Like yeah. 60 seconds ago. Yeah. 23 isn't that old. No, like, do no, no. Do you know what, mate? I think about it now. It's because it's like time's gone. I'm like, oh, fuck me. That is young. Cause I'm 32 now. I'm like, fucking hell. It was just, mate, it, and then it led from, it, it snowballed. So it started to affect, I told a neurologist, a neuropsychologist, <coughs> yeah, no, no, I'm good. I'm all good. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I'm good. Sign me off because I don't want to be coming back here. Cool. Just wanted to get out. Didn't tell him what you were thinking. No. Nah. And then that's when the panic attacks started, started happening more and I didn't understand what was going on. It was like, I felt like I was having a heart attack and, I, and then, then there, it would affect my work. So I was trying to go for I'd, I'd agent meetings and things like that and I'd be sitting on the third floor and I'd zone out. This is off the back of the uh, yeah, off the back of the success of Kajaki. Yeah. It's a good yeah, position. Yeah, 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 yeah. So good position to start. And then I was like, my confidence was fucking shot me. I had not, because again, I'm trying to, I'm struggling with, I have my identity thing of like being like, again, 23. I don't think, I think maybe if that happened now, I might be a bit better equipped to deal with it, a bit more secure in myself and a bit more, I don't know. I don't think I was, I was, I don't think I was uh, emotional. I, I was, I think I was immature enough to deal with to deal with something like that. So do you think it, do you think it knocked the, you know, that sort of youthful, I'm immortal confidence out of you? Yes, mate. Because the mortality thing is a big, mate, I can't describe it to people. If you've not had that happen to you, I, di- I didn't know that, I didn't know that way of thinking existed. I didn't know. That, but then now you're like, you can fucking, it can go, mate. You could, you could be finished in like that. And it's not your fucking decision. And so you, I, I, that, that cocksure sort of like carefreeness went, it went, it was snatched away. And I, I, I just, I, I just didn't, it was, I had to, my world just turned upside down. I didn't know how to think. I didn't know how to, I was like, shit, this is, I'm not me. I don't feel like me. And that was when, you know, I it became quite, you know, fucking, I like to overuse that the terms I overuse these days, but like I, I became depressed because of the way I was thinking. It be, constantly, I didn't know how to get out of the flat spin I was in. And it felt like I had a big black cloud fucking following me around because I just couldn't know how to stop feeling like this. Like I said, I was having an agent meeting, I was on the third floor and I, was, I started zoning out and I was very aware and I was like, like it's happening. Like I, my head was just running away with itself. And uh, they'd be sitting there looking at me looking and be like, are you all right? I'm like, yeah, yeah, no, I'm fine. But I'd be like aware that I was at a height as well. That started to fuck with me a little bit. I was like, I'm not, I don't feel safe. I feel like I'm like, I need to be on the, I need to be, Say for whatever reason, mate, if I, if I don't know what the fuck it was, but so then I was like, that affected my confidence. And then as well, mate, with, 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 with women and things like that, mate, 
I was just the bloke. I thought I was a bloke. And then when you know that if you feel like a lesser being, you don't feel like this is me and other people might think feel it's vulnerable. Silly. Yes, mate. Feel vulnerable. And I don't want to fucking... Which is I, not what a woman wants. No, because this is... generalising. The, yeah, no, that's, that's it, mate. Because it's like, well, no one wants to feel like all the time. Fuck me. But yeah, I, I couldn't really... I didn't really deal with it very well. And then after a while, mate, I just went, I haven't, I haven't got it. I haven't got this anymore. And then you start to think to yourself, <laughs> I need to live, right? So where you're feeling vulnerable, I don't want to feel vulnerable anymore. I don't want to feel like that. I need to get... I need to do what other people are doing. I need to feel safe. I need to fucking go do what they're doing. I need to fucking just live my life. Because then as well, I was left with my own thoughts all the time. If you're acting and that, you're not doing stuff. And I just went, ah, oh, fuck this. I've got to, uh, I, I'd lost my confidence, mate. It's all gone. And um, I didn't I didn't have the bollocks to tell people how I was really feeling. Um, I was just scared. Just scared, mate. And, and in the end, I just, I sort of just went, I went into a hole, put on loads of weight. Um, I, and, and I started having counselling not long after it. How did you sort that out? I said to my mum, because I didn't have to deal with it. Mate. And again, another thing, mate, counselling to me, oh, at the time I was like, fucking, these are people who are mental. These are people who need fucking to be laying on the couch. They need to be locked up in a little asylum away from my house and fucking just, just <laughs> kept in the corner. But now I'm like, oh, of course, that's not, mate, it's enough. It's like having, I, I'm an advocate for it now, mate. And when I see it, I think they're struggling. I'm like, mate, fucking, why don't you, if you can't figure that out yourself, why don't you go, why don't you go have a little word with the counsellor? Go figure, why don't go have a look. If your car was fucked, you don't know how to fix your car. You're not going to carry on driving, are you? There's like, there's a tyre missing off your car. You're going to take it to a garage and let someone fit it because you don't fucking know how to. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, it's the same logic. It's like, why are you going to continue trying to, trying to figure your own, you can't figure it out. You need help. You need someone else to, to teach you how to, you've got the tools, but you need someone else to teach you how to use them. You can't do that yourself, can you? So, you know, some people can, and those are the people that sometimes are, oh, I don't, I don't, never had a need for it, or I don't, well, that's good for you, good for you. But some people don't. And some people are in situations where they, they fucking need a fucking helping hand. And they go like, all right, by, by the way, I, I'm trained in this, and I can help you, you know? You wouldn't have gone into the fucking army, a parachute would be like, snipers, you fucking, don't, I don't need training, mate, I know how to hold a rifle. You need for someone <laughs> to teach you how to fucking do it. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, to get yourself out of that, you know. Yeah, yeah, no, um... Sorry, Matt, I've rambled on there. No, 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 it's fine. Valid point. Va everything you're saying is it's fascinating. I'm still valid points podcast. About... Fuck me, is that how long we've uh, been but... going on? I'm so sorry, Hugh. Well, that includes the icebreaker. Oh, yeah, cool, yeah, no worries. Yeah, uh, so, that, yeah. Uh, sorry for people listening, we're looking at the time on the recorder in the studio. Sorry. Not a drama. No, right. Um, yeah, the counselling, I mean, funny you anal anal analogise it with the the car yeah. breaking down. Like I, I analogise it with physical health. Oh, really? You've got, you've got an ailment. You go to the GP and go, my body is physically fucked. Yeah. We should do the same for mental. Like, if you can. Like, in America, it's a different culture out there. Mm. People people who can afford it will routinely go and see a counsellor just because of the fuck of it. Yeah. Because they enjoy going to see a counsellor. Yeah. Not necessarily because of any major wrong. It's a trend or it's yeah, a Yeah, it's a trend it's out a there. But do. what a useful thing. And I think over here, it would be a really good... It's not possible, I think, because of funding and all that. But it'd be really good if you could, like, on on uh, on demand, yeah. go to the GP and go, can I see the counsellor? Yeah. You wouldn't even need a reason. No. Just, can I book him with the counsellor? Yeah. yeah. Maybe there's a waiting list a month or whatever, but once you get in and you can go see a counsellor regularly. Yeah. Why not? Because, you right. like, if you boil it right down, maybe there's nothing wrong with it, right? Or maybe there's nothing significantly wrong mentally. Maybe you just want to flesh ideas out and things, try and understand yourself a bit better. A counsellor is a neutral person yep. who is really good at helping you find yourself yep. or finding where you where you where your strengths are, where your weaknesses are. Yep. Really, on a really basic level. Yep. I I've been on a few court, uh, you know, a few uh, rounds of counselling. Yeah, and um, it's like well, CBT. It's the art of the art of getting you to say everything. They say yes. a good counsellor say very little. Yeah, very little. Exactly. What they do say is hugely impactful. Yeah, but it's you. M my experience, was a lot, most of it was you, you're literally discovering yourself because, yeah. like you, just doing that. You weren't rambling on, but <laughs> when you're talking away, and I, f I find it really often on the podcast. Yes, when you're talking away, I often make discoveries about myself and my thoughts and my opinions. I wouldn't have discovered if my mouth was shut yeah. and there was no one there with me. Yeah, you know what I mean. Of course, because you're just free flowing and you're not yeah. sort of having, you're not judging yourself while you're doing it. You just letting it go and all of a sudden you're like oh fucking hell yeah i know that yeah i'm 100 percent it's um yeah i'm a 
You've got yeah. to be bulletproof in the TV and film. In in your yeah. world, in the arts, yeah. in arts, right? You've got to be bulletproof yeah. in terms of confidence, self-esteem. Yeah. yeah. It's like uh, more than, I think more than, probably more than any other vocation. Mate, and that's that, the thing, it I, is cut at the time, I was barely sort of like, I was like, oh, fuck, I can get by. But, I, you know, once that had happened to me, I was like, fuck, you know, no, 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 no. <laughs> the thing is as well is that whilst I was trying to carry on, um, I was having all the tests. I was still having tests. I didn't find out immediately. Do you know what I mean? I was in hospital for like a week and a bit and then I came out and then it was like test, 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 test. And they still tried, couldn't figure it out. It was just a long process of being like, and then by the end of it, I was just jaded. And, and obviously I had all my issues and I was like, fuck man, I'm, yeah, I, I have to tap out. But it's taken th that long. I was scared, Hugh. I was, I bottled it. In my head, I look back and I'm like, I bottled it. But because I, I, I didn't have it in me. I, I was, I didn't have the, I think mentally, mate, it's taken me nine years to figure out, every, to get it all in order, to get myself in order, to be able to go and even, uh, even approach acting again. I was, I was lucky that I had a, su such supportive people around me. Um, you know, people are patient with me because no one knows what it's like when, when you have it afterwards, you just change, mate. I weren't the same person I was before it. Just not. You're just not. And my family been very patient. And not only that, Mark has been, Mark Stanley, for people, like, you know Mark, he's an actor. He was in Kajaki and um, he was- We've got him and Shen coming on at some point. Oh, have you? Yeah, yeah, That'd yeah. be great. That'd yeah, be a good quad, mate. That'd be a good quad, mate. Exactly. Tips, They're yeah. flying at the moment. He's out yeah. in Cannes. Yeah. Can film first of all, mate. That's what it's about, mate. That's what it's about. <laughs> yeah. That's where I'm down. So, um, can you imagine them two lunatics out uh, there? Yeah, you I can. To... Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I was trying to blag a ticket. I was like, listen, do you need someone to carry your bags? I'll come with you. Um, you know, I was going to say was uh, Mark's been very, very helpful, and that's what happened to the point of last year where I went. I was so miserable. I just done loads of jobs to you that I didn't He's a good care player, about. Mate. He's a very good bloke. Very good bloke, mate. Very good bloke. Um, and funnily enough, over the years, I ended up end of last year doing a counselling course. And that was what I thought, oh, do you know what? I'm going to start going to do that as well. And then at the same time, Mark went to me. Uh, what do you I mean, to counsel course? To be a counsellor? Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, mate, yeah. Because I'd had it and I thought, I was quite lost. And I think it's because I was ignored the acting. I was like, no, nah, mate, it's my passion, mate. It's my, all I want to do is act. All I want to do is act. But then again, I'm like, the counselling is, is, is a fulfilling thing for me because I'm like, if I could help someone in my situation or, or anything like that, and I know people like me, who just need someone. I mean, as, uh, accounts, people get this idea that they're like people with fucking like masters and they are people, there are people with masters, things like that, but like people that are overly qualified or they're like, you know, they, they're, they're really posh people or whatever, they're not. They just need someone who's relatable, someone who's empathetic and fucking someone who can listen to you. And when they listen, it means that it's all about you. It's not about me, it's about you. But, it's helpful that I've had some traumatic things happen in my life and that I could fucking be able to be empathic on, on that level. But yeah, mate, I've got a huge interest in it and I've, I've done my level two. So that's basically being a helper, you know, helper, helpy and all that. And so the next part would be to start building level three. We'll go from there, mate. And that's an ongoing thing. And I always want to do that because I always want to, I know that it's helped me. And that's, I know it's sure it's helped you with you, with you. And I want to help other people as well. Um, you know, but uh, through that, we went back to active. Mark helped me. Got set out with an agent again. So when was it? When was the decision point to go back into it? Then I'd had so, mate. Yeah, I weren't well. I weren't doing well at all, mate. At all for nine up to it just peaked. Everything bad habits and just not doing very well in general. Not very well, and you know, I, uh, you know, ignore, where were you working? What were you doing? Fuck, mate. Here, I've sorts. done loads, mate. I was a zinc and copper roofer that? at one point. I haven't got, I haven't got the slightest interest in it. I just thought, oh, I'll do a trade. I'll do that. Yeah, you know what I mean, because I'm like, because they don't know some money. I remember having a conversation with Luke Hardy once, and he went, um, so "Why, why do you want to be an electrician?" And I was like, "Well, <laughs> that's hey, a good like, voice. Is it, that's uh, a good hello, voice." Hello, my name, my name is Luke Hardy. I'm a, a good military advisor, Kajaki. <laughs> <laughs> just got to cut that clip that'll be one of the promotion clips oh, brilliant, brilliant, anyway, so brilliant. He went to see, well, you know, he does start. he know you do that voice no he don't does he know. brilliant <laughs> he sound, he's gonna be like, don't fucking sound like me at all um, <laughs> so uh, he was like uh, he was like well, why do you want to be an electrician and I went because fucking loads of money and he was like yeah, but pe I mean, people ain't interested in doing that, surely. But that's me speaking, so I ain't fucking interested in it. And I'm just ignoring my instincts and everything else. But he's going, uh, he's going, yeah, but people got families in it, or, or they're actually interested in ele electrics. And I went, 
fuck, how they fuck, mate? Because they're there for the money. I'm there for the money. Who cares? And then I went, oh, I'm not going to do electrics, of course. Zinc copper roofing. What else did I do? Oh, I, I ended up getting... So I wanted to join... Obviously, I couldn't do the military because I would have been medically... Um, dis, uh, I wouldn't have been allowed in. I did apply for it. I appealed it and everything else. Um, so, yeah, I couldn't do that. And then I had an ex bootneck friend, family friend, and he was like, listen, fuck all that. There's nothing going on. There's no tools or anything like that. Don't worry. That's that's dead. I am. He, he had his own security firm, and he was like, "Listen, go do this uh, close protection course, and then I'll I'll get you sorted out with a bit of work." Uh, and he ended up. I ended up working. I think I'll be able to say it now because uh, they make you sign a contract now, being like, "You cannot talk about our NBA. work." Blah, blah. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, um, but I ended up working for a uh, in a in a team uh, for a billionaire, uh, one of the richest guys in the world property developer um in 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 uh in the uk owns a lot of property um yeah so it's good i've done that for a bit but like novelty wore off quickly and then i was like i've done a paypal commercial before but i got paid out for it again like for like so if you get a three-year contract mm. so essentially they go uh <laughs> look we'll pay for one year if you want to use it the following year we have to pay you like that and a bit more that's good so i got a call from my ex-agent and he was like, uh, I was asked, oh, fucking hell, Spielberg called up, is he? No, I'll come back. And he was like, no, 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 you've been paid for PayPal again. I was like, fucking brilliant, how much? He was like, same, I was like, fucking great. And I went to Russ, he's another bootneck. And he was like, um, I was like, I'm leaving. He's fucking, he hated the job as well. I was like, this is shit. I was like, this is a shit job. I'm leaving. And I was like, where am I going? I went on Google Maps and I was like, I don't want to aimlessly travel. So I was like, I'll try out being a teacher. I thought, I'll volunteer teach somewhere because that's like a lot of actors going to teach and all that. I want to teach a drama, so I'll teach some English. So I thought, Oh, I'll, I'll go to South America. I ain't been there before. I went to Brazil and I went to stay in the favela, which I've told you about before. So for three months and on the fucking second day, like it just kicked off. Oh, you need to tell me about that. Remember, did you tell me when I was drunk? Yes. Well, what? It was just like you didn't tell me, mate. <laughs> I didn't <really laughs> like it. Or not. <laughs> yeah. yeah so we, I went I, in, in A levels, I've done A levels and uh, studied media. Uh, I've done the fucking, mate, I was such a, well, I didn't know what I wanted to be or do. Obviously, I wanted to be an actor, but it, was, it wasn't like a reality from where I was from. I didn't know people were drama school. I didn't know drama school was a fucking thing. Um, I, so I went, ah, oh, drama, media, and film. Those would be really helpful for me in the future. So uh, i done media, and I, we watched a film, studied a film called City of God. Have you seen it? Yes, good right? film. Good film, and I thought, ah, oh, that looks... Mexico, isn't it? Mexico City. No, no, Brazil was in Rio de Janeiro. Oh, I mean, oh, I've, yeah, a long time ago. So, okay. City of God. So, basically... Uh, I went, oh, I've been to Thailand. I've done a bit of Asia and all that. I was like, fuck it, I'm going to go down to, to Brazil. And then I, uh, I, I thought, I looked at all these um, NGOs and non-governmental organisations, people don't know. Um, and, I, and, and there was a lot of them sort of like, hey, here's me with some poor people. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like that. And I thought, well, they're not, and they're not getting any fucking money. And I looked, I read up about it and I thought, ah, oh, there's a lot of people just coining it from doing shit like that. And I'm, not gonna, I'm not about that. I don't want to do that. And I thought, well, I want to go somewhere and I want to be able to fucking help somebody. Um, so I thought, just go to the source. Like with most things in the world, you can like find, go to the source and you'll get the truth. And so I found some bloke on Facebook. Some when, man, when was this? What year was this? 26, 2015, okay. maybe. And, uh, or 2016 it might have been, anyway. So... No, obviously 2016. So then I went to, uh, I found this mad yank on Facebook and he's like, hey, uh, yeah, come, come. Uh, and he was like, you've got to pay rent. You've got to pay your rent. And I was like, all right, yeah, no worries. And he was like, and we, we live in the favela. And I was like, fucking even better. Uh, and I thought, <laughs> I, I, mate, and it's how mad he was at the time. I just want excitement, mate. I wasn't happy. And I was like, I want excitement. So I was like, oh, I even looked up, mate. So it sounds so bad. I was thinking, how do you reckon I fare in the Congo? Democratic Republic. And they just places like that. I was looking at mad places, city places. But, you know, it's just dumb. I mean, I wouldn't have been that nut now being like, I'm going to go Ukraine. I wouldn't have been one of those people. But I was thinking, where can I just about get by and still see a little bit of action? So anyway, I saw this place called Hosinia. Uh, and it's like the most notorious favela in, um, in Rio. But I had been told by this guy, listen, they had the Olympics there at oh, the right. time right so no 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 all, all the pacifying police have pushed them all back uh up into the forest of fucking world oh, it was 2016 then yeah. yes yeah. so uh anyway i went there and i i got duolingo app and i learned a bit of portuguese because apparently they don't speak a fucking word of it in the favelas <laughs> that's a bit of a word of english and i was like yeah you know uh, boy noite and fucking bon dia and all that shit and i was like right Got that down. Got over there. I had a little GoPro and that. And uh, I will not lie, I'm not a bloke, but this time I thought, I'm going to take it with me. And I get out to the airport and uh, there's a little, there's going to be a guy that's going to meet you. 
And this, I was looking around, I thought, I'm going to film myself saying, uh, you know, like, you know, travel to Hosenia or whatever, these taxi drivers. And I said, Hosenia, and she went, I walked off. And I thought, oh, that's not good. These people look rough. And I was like, they don't want to go there. So then my guy with a little fucking Benson Hedges fag packet, like Grant spelt backwards like that. Like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, no worries, mate. Uh, hop in. And uh, I'm asking him on the way. So out of Brazil, out of the Rio airport, your roads go essentially over loads of like, they look like little shanty towns and stuff. So it does look fucking intimidating at night. So it's about 11 o'clock at night. It looks intimidating. And then obviously the lights and all of the fucking sl- like, you know, favelas, slums or whatever you want to call it. It looks like the bollocks, but it's also like, fucking hell, what am I doing? I was asking this taxi taxi driver and he's looking at me like, I was like, ah, green going, Hosinia? I mean, how how will I I do? And he's laughing. He's laughing his bollocks off. What does Hosinia mean? Hosinia is the name of the favela, Hosinia. Ah, right. So, um, R-O-C-I-N-H-A. Anyway, I'll get in there, mate. There's like, there's not many, there's like one main entrance at the bottom. It's like one road. It spirals up. So it's like a labyrinth, mate. All these places. If you take one wrong turn in this, you fucking, you're lost. Because there's, there's, there's no there's no postman. You don't go, like, oh, yeah, number fucking 55A. Like, there's no, there's none of that. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's fucking horrible. Yeah. Open sewers and all that. But it's like proper, like, gangsters and stuff. Like, the, 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 everybody's got their own music on, like, like you know, 11. Like, everyone's, like, blaring it. And you've got, like, funk. And then you've got pop. And you've got R&B. Every next door neighbour. So you, you're being, like, bamboozled with the music and that. But like they're all like grinding on their birds and that, and I'm like I'm looking, I'm like it's so intimidating. I'm like Mr. Whitey McWhitekinson sat in the back of a taxi, and they're all looking at me like, who's this guy? Who's and because they're paranoid about the Americans, the CIA, and like, they're just paranoid, right? So because obviously the favela is run by by the traffic, they're called traffickers over there, not cartel, they're called traffickers. <laughs> so they they run it. There's two gangs in this one. They're called one's called Red Command. Uh, I think they were at the top and ADA, Amigos to Amigos, were friends of friends uh, at the bottom. And there's a school that's kind of not near the middle, and that's where I was teaching. Uh, but anyway, so we're getting. What were you teaching? English. Just make any basic English to get these kids out of the villa. So they go work in a hotel or fucking uh... anything like that, mate. So anything is helpful for them. But anyway, I, I, as I was driving up, I noticed there was this van, like a little mini van, little mini bus van. Um, it had about fucking 1,000 bullets in it. Um, and the blood's all over the floor, blood up the fucking sides of the thing. And I thought, fucking hell, maybe, maybe that's been there for a while. I don't know. Just like rationalize it in my head. We're getting further and further in and uh, it stops. And he's like, get out. And I'm like, fucking looking around and people start peering in like, who is this geezer? And I'm like, fucking hell, man. I was like, you can't, I, you don't understand the fuck I'm saying. I'm like, you can't leave me. I, I'm, I'm looking, I'm like, oh my God. I'm trying to call my contact. They're not answering. I'm like, Oh my god, this is this is my worst nightmare. I'm like, I'm gonna be on bang up broad. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> and then all of a sudden, this girl comes down. Uh, she's uh, she she comes down. And she's like, uh, Hey, hey, Grant, come in. I'm like, Hey, great. And then I'm fucking come out of my backpack and that, and all she's, these little what, kids. A yank. Uh, yeah, a yeah. yank. Um, and, and she's black, so I'm still like, the, there's like there are no white people there, so I'm the only white guy. And uh, Mr. Blue Eyes, and there's these kids up on top of the roof and all shouting Gringo at me. Gringo, Gringo, Gringo. I'm looking at him like, like that. And then, and all of a sudden I hear, boom, 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 boom. I'm like, what the fuck? And it's, they're letting off fireworks. Oh. And then behind us comes a pacifying police car. They're called pacifying police. Follows up behind us. And- uh, A pacifying Yeah, so police. they're not the, so they got, they got old Bill, but there's pacifying, I think they introduced them around, maybe, I think they just put them in the favelas. So it's, I think these were people paid off anyway, man. They're corrupt as fuck. Um, they just, just, the presence, just, just the presence, right? Keeping the peace. <clears throat> and uh, so that one would just follow around. And then I remember thinking to myself, oh, wow, that's how they work. So they let people nearby know. They let fireworks off just to let people know who's in, who's there, what's going on. Mm. Anyway, I get introduced to the, the few people that are there. I get my head down and uh, they're like, like paper thin windows, mate. And it's like, it's so built up. It's not like an open road in England. They're, they're, everyone's on top of each other in terms of like the buildings. Um, high, high, but like just quite tight. Just like it's alleyways, everything's an alleyway, but leads to another fucking alleyway. But anyway, I remember trying to get my head down, shutting this little paper thin window and like people just blaring at Michael Jackson and fucking weird music they had, such strange stuff. Uh, we Are The World was one of their favourites. <laughs> they would blare it non-stop, mate. And they'd go on to about four in the morning and then two hours sleep and then all will be up again. 
music going again. It's mad. So anyway, um, I got in, I got taken down into the centre of the favela. Got a little orientation. There's only like fucking eight of us. Um, who are the others? Who are the others? You got, uh, you got a, the, a Danish guy. Yeah. Um, he was the only. He was like. He was. He was like. So didn't look like he fitted in there. He looked like like Bruno. You know, like Bruno, like Sasha Baron Cohen, like oh, ah, Bruno. Yeah. He was like. I remember thinking this skis is not gonna fucking last here because he just looked like you know bleak blonde hair and he was just looked like a boy. Do you know what I mean? I fucking hell, mate. Are you gonna look after yourself here? Then the others were. Uh, they were just. Uh, what was it? Girls, one from Ireland. But they're all people. Most of them are people on like um, language. Uh, part of their degree so they've come over but this is part of my degree to, to teach and you know learn portuguese somewhere a few americans and uh they suddenly introduced me to uh the people that work near the school the school by the way is like this fucking room tiny right? tiny right and outside it's just a favela tiny for a school in the way, yeah. yes so uh, i'll go in and then uh, like, we're going to introduce you to the the guys that run that part of the favela i was like oh right fucking hell i like, didn't really take it so i was like oh, right a pinch of salt this part this lot are like i'm like i'm not double r yeah all right you introduced me to whoever's running this gaff i know other people and then there's like you get further down it's like a valau that's it it's valau it's an open sewer so walking down that and everyone's got like little fucking <laughs> it's, it's just like it is in the films and they've got like little crates of chickens and that and you know like people selling fucking like cheese and like like rolls and stuff out of little carts and then you get further down i'm looking i'm thinking all right it's getting more built up and i'm like ah oh, there's a geezer there with an, uh, an ak-47 i was like and he's <laughs> in a fucking vest and fucking havianas and shorts and then i'm like fuck me there's a geezer next to him he's got a grenade a fucking grenade mate but he was built up like it's not open land not like a fucking desert we're in like a built up here fucking grenade in the heart of the valley, yeah. Yeah, yeah a fucking grenade they got walkie talkies on them right all got walkie talkies but i'm like grenade what the and, and he's got a, he's got a pistol in his hand, just waving it around and that. And as I've looked at this geezer, the AK, I've looked, he's looked, and he's seen Mr. Big White Guy, and he's gone, whom, aimed it at me. I've never had a, I've never had anything like that aimed at me in my life, right? I'm not, you know, and I'm not saying that I was like, oh yeah, whatever, mate, move out. I, I shut my pants. So I thought, that's a <laughs> fucking, that's definitely loaded. Whatever it is, he's ready to fire. I'm like, whoa, whoa. I'm like that, me, and uh, para para, which means stop. Uh, and I'm screaming at them, uh, nah, nah, and they're like, everyone moves out of the way, and that. I'm like, I want to get fucking slotted. Like, oh, was he just, proper angry? Yeah, he was just like, he, don't, he didn't, he was panicking. He didn't know, and I don't think they told him, look, he, they're coming down, and they, they introduced us. And then they introduced us, made the introduction, speaking in Portuguese, fluent Portuguese to these, these geezers. Uh, they all look stoned as fuck, and just like, they look rough. And they're like, all oh, right, no, it's fist bumping and all that. I'm like, yeah, no worries. I'm one of you. And uh, then they put you in a WhatsApp group. So they let you know what's happening in the area. So they say to you whether to stay in or stay out. And the, the, the favela, the uh, the uh, the yeah, traffic the traffic, guys do. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just to make sure that <laughs> yeah, right. some of the shit. I have, to show you after, I have to show you after. I have to show you after. Some of the stuff oh, on Sunday is mate. fucking mortifying. So basically, what happened was they're like always whatever's going on. They're always they've got people everywhere, and their kids go to the school. So you're looking after little Johnny. He's like walking uh, somewhere in the morning with little guns and that. Oh, I see you later, son. Like, see you later, Pepe. And then, like, you're like, yeah, no worries, mate. And it's, it's what's sad about it is that you see the kids. Like, you know, I see the kids leg, leg, making Lego and that. Some of these kids will make up guns with Lego because that's what their fucking life is. That's what mm. they see. Their parents are fucking, you know. And, and then times, some might be drug addicts and stuff. They're, I remember there's one time this girl didn't get taken, like, she didn't get picked up. And I'm like, I'll stay. I said to the other girls, get home because it's getting dark. You don't really want to be fucking wandering around. Like, especially if you're not that part of where it is in the favela. Um, I said, look, I'll, I'll take it back. And I said, I, I tried to break it down to a Google Translate. You show me, because you're about fucking, these, these are kids, like really small kids. I mean, four, five, six, seven, eight. And uh, he must have been about six or five, I think she was. I said, you show, show me home, we're home. And uh, and uh, I held her hand and we walked and we fucking went up to, she, I, I mean, I, I fuck knows how I found my way back. And um, she showed me her home and it's like, ah, you, man, I don't even know how to relate. Like, it's, it's fucking tiny, mate. It's tiny. It's a room. It's a like like garden shed kind of tiny. Yeah, 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 yeah. Kind of like that. But it's like it's not even like they've got like like you know concrete walls almost. But it's just they've got that little shed room, and then they've got like a little toilet, and then they've got probably like a little outback room or something like that. But it's fucking small. But the, the mum was passed out on a couch, oh, and there's fucking like other sinister people there. I'm like, all right, all right, see you later. Horrible, mate. But anyway, that was the first day, right? And then 
Um, I got up one morning. I thought oh, this is a bit tense, right? Two days in, I'm like, this is tense. I need to go. I was sold the dream. I'm like, you could train Brazilian Jiu Jitsu if you come here. You know, we'll surf on the beach, and you could, <laughs> if you want to holiday your dreams and help children, you want to come to Rio. And they were like, and I, I thought, fuck me, I didn't get down. I go for a run. I didn't work out for two days. So I was petrified of fucking leaving the fucking place we're staying in. And, and we were literally living in the same fucking sort of place that those people were living in. Anyway, I'm gonna go for a jog down the beach, and. Uh, <laughs> We were staying in a place called Koshopa within Hosinia, right? So I walk down, I uh, start walking, and uh, it must be about six in the morning. And I look up and I'm like, ah, there's a group of group of blokes. So maybe they're, they're a running group or something. Ah, no, 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 no. Oh, they're dressed in black and sh- Ah, right. Oh, they've got backpack. Oh, they've got guns. Fucking hell, they're like about fucking 20 of them. They're, and they've got, all oh, right, okay, they're all fucking get, getting armed to the teeth. They're all like loading up really- and I like sort each other out and I just slowly I blended into the wall and walked back to where I was staying and I thought did I just fucking see that am I going to see anything and I got my head down oh, just get your head down again so I laid down all those boom and then and it's just kicked off kicked off mate and I because obviously everything's like there's no it's not like double so glazed rival, window and that rival group or something rival group yeah and uh, what had happened was uh, his name was Rogerio oh my so God. They're one of their guys in prison their leader was in prison and then I think it was like a sort of like a for area right because everybody gets taxed in there by them you've got a problem you don't call the police you call these guys and they'll fucking deal with it do you know what I mean that's just it's like, it's like mafia it's the same fucking thing mm. so there was like territory issues for whatever reason I don't really know didn't want to ask him or fucking pry so it was like watching, mate. I could see it from a balcony. So I got videos. I thought I thought I'd show you some of it. You probably uh, did, mate. Probably, yeah, probably no did. point showing anything we'll be drinking. So, uh, <laughs> mate, they're, they're running around. So the pacifying police have, have driven up their little car, and not. I think they're poor cunts. Don't even realise what's going on. This lot are waiting. I can see them waiting from my window. I can see them like we're on a balcony. So I'm having a little look. And we're like sort of like hunkered down, sort of a little peek over. And I can see what's going to happen. Oh my God, these, these guys are going to get killed. Are they going to kill The them? police are going to get killed. Yeah. yeah. Uh, as soon as they got close enough, one of them was going, pop, 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 and shooting. Uh, and they, they realised straight away, they've hopped, they've got out of the car, the car's like rolling back down the hill. And they're like, they've run, they've run to like the side. And luckily they didn't get, n- n- neither of them got shot. But it's just like, mate, when you, I'm, mate, see city, I've never seen a firefight before. So when you see, you see like a, a, a rifle get sh- like like shot you're like wow that will kill someone <laughs> you know what i mean like, i know they're designed for that right <laughs> yeah. they'll fucking kill you like they, they, they just sound like it's a violent sound when you hear it like bah, bah, bah. You know, well it's been um desens- t- hollywood and tv and action films have desensitized it all right. try being around it try being around a weapon well no it has isn't it no of course the way that you it's hear it's just, it's just yeah exactly. like it, you, people think oh you pull the trigger and it goes bang and then it course, no, no, yeah. no 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 be around one of those in real life yeah like it will it, take it, a fucking it, it will shock you there for it, it, it will shock you mate and i but then i was like with my little gopro and that and i was like i, I fucking ross kemp like embedded like oh, let's have a little look here and i was just i, I think it just fucking i was like this is fucking exciting but at the same time, I was like, this could fuck. I, I felt so sorry for these two fucking coppers. And they're running around hiding. And then they're all, and then all of a sudden you can see it. Because different order favelas, it all goes like that. And you've got a fucking great view of everything where we were. And uh, they're, they're killing each other, mate. Fucking see them. Fucking, you could hear it all going off. Loads of it, mate. Fucking, you could hear it when, and I thought to myself, what if someone sees us on our little fucking bat and they sort of having a little look and we look fucking, sees mate, the I heard a crack and the crack sees and thump. the gringo. Yeah. yeah, heard a crack and thump because you could see him running around shooting each other, fucking running around like, like, like it's, it's gorilla what mate, it's mad, mad. I've never seen anything like it, obviously. So then that continued and um, fucking hell, mate, it was, it was the, the people that were there half the numbers they're like no no this is not for me and i was like yeah no worries mate not for me. I fucking they both did they? yeah I, our people left yeah. our people left yeah and then the people the amount of people died mate so what happens is they let the army let people just fucking murder each other right they let them get it all out of the system people, pile, bodies piling up you can see bodies i can see fucking see them see them and then it was like that's why they had a whatsapp group to let you know if it's going to kick off or not Stay in. Don't go to school. Don't do this. Don't do that. And then there was one time, mate. Uh, we, uh, oh, fucking, I was about to tell you something. Then. Yeah. So what they do? They had the army waiting to come in, right? So they send the army in afterwards, and they go and do like they're like the death squad, right? They got these trucks, these armored vehicles, and they've got little holes, right? And they just poke the rifle out of it. Where they're just like they don't even there's no like like wagons where people are sat on the back of it. They just got holes where they poke the rifle out because they think they're going to get dick from any. They're going to get. 
Bulletproof like, wagons. That's like, it, yeah. right? Armored and because of the way it's all built, they just get big easels popping out, pop, 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 just go like that. So anyway, um, uh, so they're waiting for the arm to come in. We go to school one morning. I always did the morning shift. And uh, fucking hell. On the, mate, this was like fucking front page news in Rio, right? So they've got, I'm, I'm in the school and I'm like, fucking hell, no one's turning up. Like there's like two kids. And then everyone's running around. That's the day after. No, a few days after. A few days, a few days, days if it's gone on. And it's like, okay, we'll go back to school for a bit. Cool. All right, no worries. So, um, and they have like a little ceasefire when they allow the people to go out, get your food, get your food, fuck off back home. <clears> and then we're going to carry on. So then what happened was, um, people were looking at you probably looking at why was you staying in there? I'm a man, I thought it was exciting. And I thought, well, I'm, you know, that sort of feeling of, oh, I'm alive or I'm not, I don't, it's not really going to apply to me. I'm not a gangster or whatever. Anyway, so they, uh, fucking hell. So it was their teacher one morning. And I was like, there's fucking like two kids here. And all the people running around outside frantically, and I thought, ah, oh, something's gonna fucking happen. And they're like, and then the mad yank came in, the only time I've ever fucking seen him. He's like, you need to get out of here now. Don't, don't you need to leave here. What are you doing here? And I was like, ah, oh, right, I thought we was teaching you. Like, no, 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 go. The army have surrounded the favela and they're coming in. Oh, right? shit. I walk past and we start to walk up, right? The, make sure the kids get taken off so we, we look I look up at one of like the little like little bars they've got there and they've got a little TV on like the outside and I'm looking at it and I'm looking there's helicopters flying around and it's like fucking like BBC news they're like that like out the window and I'm like fuck we're, this is we're here like, we're here like this is like they're filming it it's on the fucking TV it was so surreal I took a photo of it so surreal mate and then uh, we walked out to a bit where I could see the entrance and because they're all lined up like, you know, like Billy Elliot and that are all like fucking like Thatcher times. They're just there, ready to go. And they're all like kitted up. Um, and, they, and then I went to a part of the favela also walking home. And they've got a special force. It's called a BOPE. That's what they're called out there. The B-O-P-E. BOPE. And they're like SAS version, I suppose, right? That's your equivalent. And they're just like masks. They're like, no, 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 no talking. We're just here to fucking, we're here to make sure that they don't come back or they're fucking dead or they're whatever. Death squad. And they, they, they fucking, they don't hide it. They got their masks. They don't give a fuck, mate. They're like, yeah, we wear it right. They don't care. And a lot of these people, the police, they'll pose with their traffickers. So if they've killed them, they'll have a photo. Like, like, like they're, yeah, they're hunting game or something. It's fucking mad, mate. So, and also the traffickers do it with other if they find someone from a rival gang mate some of the shit they do to them it's uh yeah it's, it's horrendous but anyway um so went back up to the the went back up and one of the so i they still so it went on for like another week and a half it was still happening they came in and they said look there's curfew you ain't allowed out don't go out after this time we had a new guy come in and this mad yanks probably just wants the fucking money for the rent. So he didn't tell him that there's anything happening in the favela. Obviously, there's like news, there's like journalists and stuff with a little body armor at the bottom. And I'll be walking around in my little yellow shorts and like, how you doing guys? You all right? And I, they're probably thinking, what the fuck is this geezer doing? Uh, but I got on, because you got introduced to everybody. So they know who you are. They'll call you Chio, you're an uncle, right? So everybody fucking knows who you are. So you just get a free pass. But if they don't, like, and what happened after I left was the Spanish tourist uh, went on a little tour around there. Someone took him in and he got shot. Fucking hell. Shot, mate, on spot, dead. 30, I think it was 33 or something. But anyway, before that, this new English guy comes and uh, his name's Tom. <laughs> he's a posh guy. Like, he's like, you know, like like blonde hair, like good looking. And he's like, oh, you know, I've lost my luggage at the airport. <laughs> Fuck, buddy. And I'm like, oh, mate, that's terrible. You're right. And I know I'm like, no, just trying to get hold of Heathrow and you know, blah, blah. I'm like, listen, um, I said, have you got any food? He's like, no, I've not eaten all day. I was like, oh, fucking hell, all right. Um, I said, look, it's seven o'clock curfew. It's about quarter past seven now. And all of the fucking, uh, like, uh, the streets are swarmed with them, right? So they're searching houses. With the army? Yeah, yeah, yeah. with the army, they're searching them. They're just... So this English guy turns up on that day? Yeah, he, get, he managed to get in, managed oh to get in, God. right? So, and I'm like, I said, he doesn't, he's like, what's really happening? What's happened? And I was like, I don't really want to be a geezer go to, listen, mate. Like you've walked into a war zone and like, no, I can't believe that cunt's not told you because uh, he probably wants your money. But, and he's lost his luggage. I thought, all right, listen, mate, there's a little place that's pizza, right? There's an oven grilled pizza and it's literally just underneath where we are, right? About just like a road away. I said, or oh, a road away, an alleyway away. Let's go down there. Come with me. And they went, Grant, don't go out. I went, oh, mate, they're down now. I can see where they are. They're not going to get there that quick. So we walked down. And, uh, I'm waiting for my pepperoni supreme. And um, I'm talking to him, <laughs> cashing him up. I'm like, yeah, I'll show you the ropes, mate. Don't worry about that. Oh, no, fucking, you know, so-and-so and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, we step out with the pizza box. 
and all I hear is blah, 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 and like, people screaming at me. I'm like, what the fuck is what the fuck? And I look and I'm like, fucking hell, there's a team of I think it's about sixteen of them. And if they I imagine you might know when they're working close quarters, they're sort like they're like they're quite bunched up because it's alleyways and stuff, they kind of have it's like a three sixty sort of assault team, like rifles aimed up here, they're everywhere, fucking there, there. So just everyone's got something covered, right? So it must be how they work because of the environment they're working. And he's aiming at me and he's like, oh, I can see the whites of his eyes. Everything's like black hits a tone. I'm like, oh my God, they're aiming at us. And then he's like, and they start going like that, start going like that. So I'm like, shit. Calling, calling you forward. Yeah. He's going, we should walk. And I was like, no, 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 no. We should go this way. Go towards him. But it's the strangest thing having a fucking rifle aimed at you. And you think, I'm going to walk towards these people. It's so fucking bizarre. So then they grab, <laughs> grab us in. Fucking pizzas on the floor. And, uh, they're like screaming at us in Portuguese and I ain't got a fucking clue I don't know how to fucking talk to him so he's a fucking language exchange I'm like mate fucking he's white as a guy's poor bastard he's not seen any of this I'm like just fucking talk, talk tell him fucking tell him mate I don't I, I'm trying I'm screaming at him now I'm, I'm fucking joining with him I'm like, fucking tell him what we're doing and he's not he's gone he's like catatonic state and I'm like fuck I'm we've got told to say like a phrase right so if you can call by anybody to say who you are right and I think it was like uh uh Un voluntario, un proyecto favela, chiolino, right? So that means I'm a fucking volunteer project favela, um, and I'm an <laughs> uncle, right? Chiolino's an uncle. There's also a phrase I got taught by the women, which is chiligo, and that's I'll call you later, right? So <laughs> I'm in a fu- my adrenaline's pumping my body because they're aiming rifles. Like, they're gonna fucking kill me, mate. And I was like, I'm going to him. Look, whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, 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 Chiligo, Chiligo. And they're all going like, this is fucking gringo. Telling he's going to call us later. And all look at each other like, what's this geezer about? And then I was like, they were like tapping me up. And I was like, shit. I, what we do is you don't like pick, pick, pick pocket your phone out there. So you tuck it in the front part of your shorts. And obviously I've got fucking phone like this. You imagine you see that straight away. If you're paranoid and you think I've got, I'm hiding a weapon or something. So I've pulled my shirt up and they're like, no, 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 it's just a fucking phone, just a phone, phone, phone. And they take it out, dash it on the floor. And then this geezer at the front realizes that I'm a bit of a plonker, and he's like, <laughs> pulls his fucking like death skull mask down, and he's like, arm on the shoulder. And he's like, my friend, what are you doing here? <laughs> and I'm like, I live up there. And he's like, looking up, and he's like, you know, I'm like, yeah, yeah, just that one there. And he's like, why? I'm like, ah, because I'm teaching, and I was like, Chilino, Chilino. He's like, <sighs> and he's like, my friend. Go home. <laughs> All right? And I went, I can't. I'm here for a bit. And he's like, they're just like, they're like these geese are fucking idiots. So we're going to get slotted. Then I sent the fuck off. And he was like, just fuck off down there. I'm like, oh, I can't go back that way. No, no, no. Fuck off down there. I'm like, oh. All right. um, so we had a couple of brushes with things that are a bit silly. And there was one time, this is the last fucking story on this. Uh, we were in the school, right? They've got this, all these kids, all they want is with fucking instruments. Banging and making ma- massive amount of racket and noise. So they had a little shelf for the instruments and we put it out of arm's way because all they want to do is get it and make noise um so i put it up at my height now one morning i'd i'd uh we'd been in there and bullet holes had come through the fucking where the toys were and they just they, I, that, that was what I, this is like about a fucking month later i got to the point where i went fuck me that could have been like me stood there fucking getting a tambourine for some little dickhead and i'm fucking getting killed for it. i don't think this is yeah, I shouldn't be here. As if there weren't any enough, enough warnings. But what I was doing at the time, mate, I was going on Bumble, right? A weekend, I thought, this is so stressful. You know what Bumble is, right? It's a little dating app. Oh, okay. Right, so what happens is... I thought you meant you're going for a walk. No. Bumble. <laughs> yeah, Bumble. That's a bimble, isn't bimble, it? Bimble, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, no, no, it says a, it's a dating app. And what happens is uh, the birds will have to uh, say... They have to match first, and then they'll go... Uh, they'll get in touch with you first. Text 24 hours, you've got a little time limit on it, but they have to get in touch with you. And you're doing this out there? Yeah. All right, I remember this part of the drunk story. Go yes. I, I remember I remember you talking about it, but go on. So what I would do is, I'd go, <laughs> I right, think I'm going to find out, I'm just going to go on a date, because I've got fuck all to do, and this is too intense. This is so intense when you're in there, you're like, oh my God, I need get, to get out of here. So get you'd leave some it favela like, birds. Yeah, exactly. What would I, no, no, I would never do that. I was like, <laughs> fuck me, I don't want anybody come knocking at my little door, going like, come, come with us. So uh, it'd be outside of it. So you go to downtown Rio, right? Le Blonde or some affluent area like Copacabana. So uh, go on dates and I'd be, I was in this one bar and it'd come on the news and like, we're like, in like two bottles of wine in like, you know, the conversation's flowing, she speaks English uh, fluently and there's people there that's speaking and there's a lot of them because they're affluent people, right? You go outside of that favela, people have got loads of money. So strange. And they're going, I'm going, 
cool, but I, I fucking live there. I live there. And they're like, what? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, sitting with the badge. I'm like, I live there. And then a the bar, barman hears me and he's like, what? And I'm like, you what there? Hosenia. And I'm like, yeah. They're like, why? And I'm like, oh, I'm teaching. And then all of a sudden, some other couple go like, finishing the state game, tell us more. And I'm like, I had the fucking like, whole bar at one point, but I'm like, and then this happened. And then, and then I saw this guy on the line. <laughs> We've lived there for like 40 years. We've never once wanted to go there. Why are you there? You've flown halfway across the world to go in there. Oh but God. yeah, but great times, mate. Great times. Yeah. I'm wearing a time, by the way, mate. So I need to take a piss. I'm going to take a quick piss. And, yeah. we, and we've got like 20 minutes to go. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, 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 right, piss over. Yeah. Oh, the... Okay. Rio, away, mate. mate. I'm so sorry. Rio. No, but it's, 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 it's in, fascinating. Yeah. It's like, um, we... I was just going to say, we're going we're gonna to have to do a part two, right? So I reckon... Yeah. Because we're running out of time. Right? <laughs> yeah, like, we're we're not going to go. Well, well, no, but what you should do is... What you should do is... Um, so, obviously, I'm going to go and watch your... Me and the missus are going to go and watch your on the 8th. 2.22. Like. Go, well, yeah. we'll do it at some point after that. Yeah, great, After the show. Yeah, great, yeah. Um, but we've still got time. We've still got some time now, so... Those those experiences go away and doing stuff like that. I had a I had a recent guest on who's he's a he's a farmer he's a farmhand he's yeah. ex military a farmhand and he left and he went and did I think he was looking for something else and he one of the things he ended up doing oh was it before he joined long story short he went to Korea South Korea to teach English was it teaching English yeah and mate. it's just, it's just, I mean not like your favela stories mate <laughs> yeah. but it's such it's, a, still, it's like you're throwing yourself in the, I mean yours an extreme example yeah, I'd, but you're yeah, throwing yourself in, there, in yeah. the deep end yeah. you're going you ch- you're going take me I'm going to chuck myself into the heart of a culture and I'm going to learn how to swim on the job mate it's fucking nothing else like it man, that was one of our best experiences I've ever had just yeah. because you're in like you're you're in I say another culture completely immersed in it do you and like you say you're throwing yourself in the deep end man and that's uh i recommend anybody to go do it go to another country go go learn another place of life go look at them and it'll teach you a bit more about yourself as well so the question yeah. that led us down the favela rabbit hole yeah. was what was the decision point for you to get back into acting <laughs> Sorry, mate. It's my ADHD. I'll just ram on. You know, no, about, I asked on. it about 40 minutes ago. Fucking hell. Sorry, mate. We did a podcast. We go about 24 no, hours. No, don't you apologise. Uh, what? So... At that point, so I've done menial jobs. That's what you asked me. I was like, oh, man, I've done jobs that I just didn't fucking care about. But obviously, I've done a favela one. <coughs> done a few other. Came back tall. Didn't like it. Um, and I just went through the cycle of being like... Ignoring... Because obviously, I was fucking terrified. Obviously, I, I, after the sh- I was doing a lot of mental work as well on myself. Because I weren't weren't ready i weren't ready mate I, I i had a lot of I had a long journey to go on to be able to get back to this point so again i was very unhappy for a long time and it just got worse do you know what i mean and what happens is you leave something let's say like, okay we'll go back to the physical analogy you leave a wound untreated for a long time and what's it gonna do it's gonna rot and then you and it might you need to fuck it it'll, it'll get to a point where you have to address it you have it, to it, it gets worse and it takes longer to repair. That's it, mate. And like, that's what I had essentially. And I think uh, things just weren't going well. But uh, last year, I just wasn't happy, and I was wondering why. And I was like, "Well, because you're not fucking doing anything you like doing. You're not. Yeah, you know, I, I couldn't. I was always searching for something, and I didn't. I, and it was an identity thing as well. And obviously, I struggled with that once I'd I'd, I'd uh, had the stroke, and uh, and I left acting because because of this because of the stroke because it was a lot to take. Um, and deal with so then at that point yeah a lot of things were going wrong and it all came to a head um and it was i didn't have like a it was just a, a point where i think right now's the time to do something about this because i'm not happy and then i think mark and i spoke with mark i reached out to people that i knew and i just went mate i was gonna i, I said can i have a meeting with you can i sit down and i wouldn't want mates anyway but i said could we have like a business sort of chat not just us being mates and having a drink or whatever so could we just have a proper chat and uh, I said to him, "How should I do this, mate? How should I go back about this? Because I'm terrified, I'm scared, and I don't know what I'm, I don't know what I'm doing, and all the confidence." And it was just me. I was at that point. I just felt I had to, I had to do what was right for me. I mean, That's ignored- a tough pill to swallow. There, you're swallowing up the pride doing that, aren't you? Yeah, mate. I'm hundred percent. Of course, as well as I'm like, I'm, I, my I mean, way to do that. Work. To, to, yeah. to, it's almost like a, to to say, to admit that you need. I need assistance in this. I can't yeah. do it myself. No, mate. Of course. You know? yeah. And. Uh, and he sat down with me and he went, this is our plan. He was gracious enough that he gave, not only gave him the time, but he went, here's the effort. I'm gonna, we're doing this together, all right? And if this doesn't work, this is how else we're going to do it. Is this Mark? Yeah. He's a fucking legend. Such he? a good bloke, mate. And he's been, he's been there for me for when I've been at my lowest as well. So he's, mate, he's, 
he's top draw. I, c- I can't thank him enough. I-, I wouldn't have been doing the play that I'm doing now had it not been for him. I've done the self-tape for the play uh, for last year when Cheryl Cole was doing it. Uh, I got down to the last two for it then, uh, but I didn't get it. I-, I lost that to somebody else, but then he asked me back and they asked me back in for this year uh, for, for <coughs> going to the Apollo. Um, but uh, yeah, it wouldn't have been for him, mate. He's, um, he's been such a help. And then I've got, I've, got, I've got my agent, Rob Hughes, with Felix DeWolf. There, uh, Rob, I knew Rob. I've known him for ages. So all like, all these jigsaw pieces fitted together, mate. Do you know what I mean? And, and and Mark set that up. Mark helped out with that. So is the is the show your first job back in the game? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. After really? nine years, mate. Yeah. How are you finding it? Are you enjoying it? Uh, uh mate. Uh, listen, I, 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 mate, I live and breathe it, mate. I love it. I love it. But I will say this: if you do any, if you take nine years out of anything, you'll fucking know about it when it comes down to. Tr- you know, pr- trying to produce the goods because I went on for my first night and I'll, I'll be, it's a very small part. Um, I've forgotten uh, how, it's like hard, it's like, the only analogy I could use, like, you know, ring rust, fighters, right? If you had a world championship fighter, has time out, 18 months, two years, whatever, yeah, they don't come back and fight the biggest dog going. They just don't. They have a few warm-up ones. They they shake off, the, they dust themselves off, get the cobwebs out, and and then they go right now. I'm gonna have a go, right? But was what I and that's what I'd forgotten. I'd thought, oh, uh, I just went in. I thought this is gonna feel like it did before, but I'd forgotten all that. The feelings you have when you go on stage and being able to be. Um, Conor McGregor says it, he's like you have to be calm in the eye of the storm you have to be present in that moment and be able to manipulate and manoeuvre and do everything you want not you know not being like letting it all swallow you up and I think that first night I was like oh fucking hell this, this is, it jarred with me a little bit I was like I haven't done this for a while but then the second time I did it it's like ah oh, I fucking love this, this is why I'm back because I love it mate I love it and I and it's just yeah and, and yeah so it's a short story it's fucking great it's good funny you it, mentioned mate. McGregor yeah because have you watched this thing on Netflix? I've watched it. Yeah, I finished it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm only I'm on the third episode in, but I had a, a moment last week. I started yeah. watching it, and so I got I got I I uh, had a bad shoulder injury late last year, and I had to stop. How did you do that? Rugby. So it's one from years still? ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's still from years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I did it again last year playing rugby. Oh, fucking Event. hell! Yeah, um, and uh, so I I go boxing training like mm. a proper boxing. I'm like fucking boxer side I go proper boxer yeah. and um, and long so short the shoulder injury put me out for ages yeah and I literally last week I was watching that McGregor documentary yeah. and, it, and I said to myself because I can't remember what I was watching on there and he basically said he's, he said to himself I'm being a fucking pussy I'm being yeah. a pussy I'm being a pussy in some part of it and I oh, said this- and I said to myself because yeah. I'm, I'm, I started back at boxing training, yeah. but I hope he says now I'm, I'm only going to the early morning sessions when yeah. I go 6am they start but oh, I'm going there instead of the, no I am up anyway yeah. I'm going there because I know this is why I've been doing it because yeah. I know that it's highly unlikely there's going to be sparring in those sessions the sparring happens in the evenings oh uh, okay yeah. but because I'm not doing the sparring I'm losing the confidence to go back at all into it because you're making it a thing because each yeah, time you're making, making it a thing making it a thing and it's this tiny thing mate I literally said to myself last week you're being a fucking pussy. Yeah. Just go. Yeah. Just go. Yeah. And, and, and he's, this is it. Like you, like the first time you go back in the game, yeah. done it. Done it. Done it. Done it. Done it. Exactly. What was exactly. I worried about? Like, exactly. Yeah. What now was you're, I worried now you're about? There. You can soak up and enjoy it yeah. and learn again or try and delve in yeah. and going down a different, yeah, 100%, mate. 100%. Yeah. yeah. 100%. Exactly. Back, to this, back to that confidence thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Many, many, many people, I think, in, in life, they have a, a level of confidence which they don't really need to register. They don't have, they don't, it's never been a big part of their lives. They just are who they are. Yeah. Confidence has never been a big factor with anything for them, right? No. And there's other people who, for whatever reason, yeah. if maybe the vocation they're in, maybe the background, the experiences they've had, confidence is a major factor in them. Like it's a major contributor to whether they're satisfied in life or not. Yeah. A, a factor, not the factor. Whether they're content or not, whether they're happy or whether they're fucking sad. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, uh, back to the, in, in your vocation, mate, it's a huge thing. Huge it's thing, a huge mate. thing. I've got a, I've got a um, actress and a voice actor coming on, on. Oh yeah. Back on Saturday called Jess Nestling. In fact, we were in Bags' place. It's Bags' missus. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah and we yeah. were having a, when when I when I met up with her a couple of months ago to discuss the podcast. We were talking to her about the same thing. Yeah, so yeah, it yeah. does really interest me the confidence side in what you do. Let's talk to her about it. So I momentum think. as well is a big thing with it. Momentum, you know what I mean, well, that's a big yeah, thing, man. Yeah, yeah, it's like, yeah. with, like a like a fighter on a skid. Well, I mean, like, you yeah. came off the back of Kajaki, flying high, mate. Yeah. The success in that film, yeah. and then yeah. 
the stroke happens. Yeah, like, mate. oh my God. That's going to be worse timing. That's the thing is, even walking in here to, the, to play what we're doing now, people are going like, oh, you've done a feature. Like a feature. And it's like, you know, because of BAFTA and fucking everything else. Mate, it was, a, like I say, a huge success. It is. And I, I get people now, mate, when I was doing menial jobs, labouring jobs, mate, I was working in people's gardens and that. And someone would mention it because I'll work with them and they'll say, oh, we've done acting, blah, blah. And, and they'll be like, I know that film. Or oh, I know that. The amount of hey, people that fucking seen it. Many this, people man. refer to it as the greatest British war film's ever been done. It fucking which is, is a pretty it big accolade. Go watch it. Go fucking watch it. Because it is. Because I'm in it. And no, 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 it is good. It is it's sick, mate. I love the film, mate. I know I'm in it, but I'm like, oh, I think he's pucker, mate. Do you, um, do you prefer stage stuff or... Uh, or um, on screen stuff different animal mate and it's like I can't I can't really say I don't think I think I love I think my theatre is the first love that I had because it was what I did at school do you know what I mean you were just there you weren't I weren't taping at school do you know what I mean but the one that I'm more keen to learn now is TV and film I'm like I'm more like hungry to be like I want to get better and better and better and better at that but it's equal I think it's equal they're just different animals mate and do you so could you see a lot of actors do both yeah right is that is that kind of the same thing as the reason people do who do athletics on track in the summer the same reason they do cross country in the winter is it like tra- keeping yourself sharp training in a slightly different discipline but i think they yeah. can complement each other you learn a different i things. think sometimes you get with it as well with certain actors that are just like they ain't made for stage you take uh, some people might be like oh they're a fantastic film actor and all that but i'm like yeah but it takes You've got to fucking be a proper machine to be able to go onto a stage, carry a fucking play, be in the moment. You be filming, you st- cut, fucking stop. Yeah, no, no, some, someone's lighting's fucked. All right, okay, I get to start again. I get to do that again. I, get to, I, can, I can do that again. I can <sighs> reproduce that. Again, like with Kajaki, we've got two takes. We're like, we're moving on. Do you know what I mean? So, you know, there's... So in stage, you've got to be on point. On every point, time. There's no... Every night. There's no fucking there's no about second There's some chances. audiences don't give you the same reactions. You can't depend on that it's not you so you have to be like uh you have to be so in touch with what in the moment there and then obviously i'm not saying you don't do that in film and tv i'm not i'm just saying is i think my respect for certain actors i'm like you go on and do a show do it every fucking night and you get to be able to to to, to hold the crowd it's fucking it's, it's a it's a talent mate you know what i mean it's not mm-hmm. you don't no not everyone can do it you know mm-hmm. And I'm looking forward to watching the show. Mate, I'm glad um, to, to have you there. Tell people, uh, uh, so how can they follow you and, yeah, how, and Grant, where to look for the show? Uh, so my Instagram is at Grant Kilburn. So it's G-R-A-N-T-K-I-L-B-U-R-N. Um, and then the show is 222, A Ghost Story. That's on the, uh, the Apollo, Apollo Theatre, Shaftesbury Avenue, West End. Shaftesbury Avenue. Fucking oh, mate, yeah. used to, used to it's frequent, a fucking deal, mate. used to frequent the walkabout there on many an occasion. What a joint that <laughs> it's is. It's great, what a joint It's great. <laughs> but uh, I've also got, we've got the gala night coming up, so that's the press night. But I've got, that was another thing I wanted to mention. Um, the stro- I got in touch with the Stroke Association because I've done my post on Insta. That's so how Kate would have known about it. And uh, and I reached out to them because I was like, this isn't fucking not going to be, you know, hide away from it. I want them to be involved. And they've got in touch. The Stroke Association charity are, uh, they're going to, I'm pretty sure they're going to attend uh, the gala night and they're going to come on the night that I'm on, on July the 8th when I'm covering, uh, under, I'm doing the understudy role. But also they're going to do a little spread. Uh, they're going to do a little uh, piece on me as well. And which is the most important thing to me, mate, more than anything, is so I could tell my story to them. And even if they use a little snippet of it and they got a photo of me, there's some fucking 23 year old out there. Cause I saw one thing that did what happened to me, mate. I looked online and I couldn't really find anything I could identify with. I'd be like, well, this is mm-hmm. not me. And they made me feel even more isolated. Um, so there's one person out there that looks at me, young person, old person, no matter who it is. And they go, Ah, oh, he's, he's doing all right. He's doing all right. All right, it took him nine years to get back to where he needed to be, and he, but he's doing all right. So that means that I can be, and I can fucking do it. And that's all I care about, man. That's all I care about. But well, you know what? I'll put it in the blurb of this as well in the description. Yeah. I'll put it in there. Yeah, you great, know, mate. About it, like Grant yeah. Kilburn. You can stroke survivor, like, mate. Uh, I'm fucking wearing it like a badge, mate. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm, I yeah. wanted to have it on my Instagram. My belt was like, it's a bit much. Don't fucking go around fucking telling people that all the time. And I was like, ah, well, you know, I don't know. I'm proud of it. I'm proud of it, man. I've survived it. I'm here. Do you know what I mean? You know, I think it's part of my identity now, and you know, and I'm, I'm happy to talk to about, about with anybody. Well, mate, thank you so much for having me on. Good, I'm so mate. sorry. It's shame you're going for time. It's, it's we could have gone on for all day. Uh, we could have, mate. I don't well, think your hacking fans would have no. been happy, but <laughs> I think this is, is this, this any good? Yes, you can use this yes very good. Yeah. Very good. What we'll do is next, we'll, so. Uh, uh, do you tell all the guests like, we're getting on for a second part and, and they're like <laughs> no there's been part twos before mate yeah. after July yeah. we'll get we'll do it what we'll do is we'll time it for because 
we got to go to fucking work now. I yeah, got to go. Yeah, I've got to go find my we'll, uh, clubber for. Colin we'll Hunt. time it for. Um, we'll do an, We'll do a late afternoon. Yeah. Mid afternoon, late afternoon. Yeah, and mate, we go for beers. Wait. Yes, mate. And I've you can tell me stories, that. and yes. I'll forget them. Yes, exactly. We'll do that all over <laughs> again, mate. Parker, thank you for having me on, Hugh. Thanks, and thanks for Bagsy as well for letting us uh, be. Oh, Bags, yeah. Yeah, Bags. Yeah, Bags. Their arms, love it.